So this is the Hyper Tough 1000 lumen LED light. It says 1000 lumen rechargeable work light. Hangzhou, Great Star Industrial Corporation Limited, model 7916, battery capacity 4,000 milliamp hours, input rating 5 volts DC, 2 amps, conforms to UL standard uh, 1576, date code, blah, 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 made in China. Um, so, conforms to UL, but that's strange. They don't have UL certification. They got ETL. I don't know what the FC or BC is, but that's strange. Doesn't really matter to me because, you know, I don't care. But I live a little more wild than most people do. So uh, I got the board out, but input 5 volt 2 amps, just like it says. Output is USB A. Uh, top one's USB C. That's not going to be power delivery or any other fast charge protocol. That's just going to be your basic 5 volts max 2 amp input. Um, output, I tested this up to about 2.25, 2.3 amps is where the voltage really started to dive down close to 4.5 volts. And that would be kind of the no-go zone. At 1.25 amps, the voltage was at 5, so... You know, it, it works up to 2, even up to 2.4, but really the sweet spot's probably going to be uh, 2 amps of output on there as well. Um, I did try to do, um, you know, charging it while having the light on. It cuts the light off. Um, I didn't try to do input-output, but we can do, you know, see if it does pass through. Um, and then your power button. And this is actually very well designed, and it's got the magnets here. Let me test to see how powerful that is. Um, ah, that's not bad. That's not bad. What did I lose? Are you done with the leaf blower right now? Yeah, I'm done with the leaf blower. Uh, I think I lost the um, power button. Which way would it go? This way. Yeah, probably. Doesn't really matter, I guess. Um, and um, it's got... This piece is for the uh, charging LED indicators. I think it's four lights. Uh, let's get... Um, well, I guess... So, first thing you're gonna do is four screws, one, two, three, four. Simple enough. This comes off, no need to take this off. Uh, this is just for the lens for, I think, polarization. Um, then next up is, unfortunately, the only downside is they've got this configured so that you have to remove everything. Let's see if I'm doing this the right way. Nope, so I think it's going to be like this, like this. Yep. So, to get everything out, you've got to remove four screws, two and two. And then you've got another four screws. And then you've got this clamping over, but this board has to be removed because the screw hole's right there. Uh, my thought process was, why not upgrade this with some um, 21700 5,000 milliamp hour cells. Uh, these are used Tesla cells from technically bigbattery.com, but I can't remember what the name is that they sell these um, through like another brand of theirs essentially. Uh, but you can get these on eBay in 10 packs. It'll be a 10S1P 36 volt battery. Uh, doesn't come, or no, does it come with a BMS? I don't think it does. You can get it with BMS for a little bit more money, otherwise it's just going to come with the, uh, the, uh, balance cable. Uh, but I just destroyed the battery, took it apart, not destroyed it, but, um, you know, took it apart, got the spot welds off, cleaned it up a little bit, tested these, and they all came out to 4,800 milliamp hours using a 0.2C discharge rate. 
uh, down to 2.5, which I think, you know, do actual data sheets exist for this? I'm sure they do, but since this cell, technically, if this is even a real, you know, Tesla cell, which I believe it is because real Tesla cells, they don't have a positive cap like this. Um, not talking about like an actual nipple or button, just a positive cap. So it's like spot welded on in a few places around the edges here, which is indicative of the cell being a completely naked, lacking positive top cap, or even if there's a protection of PTC or CID under there, I can't remember. Um, regardless, so, you know, these probably did come from real Tesla modules. They're not that degraded. Um, just, you know, just to show you guys, this isn't really the point of the video, but, um, so we're at 3.663 volts and we have 12.823 milliohms on my ACIR meter. So good cell, um, consistent, really no complaints with these, just that they're advertised, they're advertised as new too. They're very, very deceptive on what these cells actually are. So, but that's not the point of this video, kind of is. So just, um, I figured, I was just kind of curious about, this claims to be a thousand lumens. I have a 7,000 lumen LED, which is 70 watts. So, a, you know, 10 watts should equal a thousand lumens if it's linear. I don't know if it is or not. Don't, I don't know enough about LEDs to tell you the truth. But my thing was, I tested this and on my clamp meter, these cells are just about full now. They weren't earlier, but I charged them up. This thing's a little finicky. Yeah, quit bitching at me. There, DC. What is this thing on about? There we go. Okay. Uh, it, it's well, it keeps changing. And it's just all over the place. Let's get it around a wire first to turn the light on. Close enough. Um, so it's got two brightness modes. First brightness mode, and we're getting, uh, we're getting three amps. Three times, well, I guess let's see what the battery voltage is now, because it's definitely not 4.2. Um, these batteries, these cells in here are not that good, which is kind of to be expected. Um, I'm getting a battery voltage, 3.5, 3.52, 3.52 times four. Okay, that's that's over 10 watts, so maybe this is 1,000 lumens. Um, if we step it down to the next power level, uh, we're under an amp. Uh, we're somewhere between three quarters and like 900 milliamps. Um, the amp draw does go down, I'm assuming as these heat up. I think that's how that works with the resistance. Again, not an LED expert. And then next mode is off. And we're still seeing our zeros pretty close. So again, one more time. And we're just, oh, come on. We're just shy of three amps again. But that voltage drop is insane so let's turn it off and see what our voltage is uh, these didn't completely finish charging but they were in the um constant voltage stage so we're at like 3.89 it's still rising a little bit but yeah it's probably gonna stop at like 3.9 3.9192 
Um, so that's that's a pretty big drop because they were, you know, in the high fours. They're four point. I'm guessing somewhere between one zero and one five. Um, I can see if I put a charger on it. It's just a power bank, but I have a meter here. So we've got not quite two amps going in, which would tell you that we're in the constant voltage stage. And I'm getting 4.11 volts, which that actually tells you that it's not charging at two amps because it could go higher. Although I guess I'd have to probably drain these lower. And just to show you, um, if you try to power it on, it does not go on. Um, so for pass-through charging, let me grab something. Um, I guess this is a 12-volt fan, but, you know, it doesn't really matter. I guess we should see more power draw off this then. Let's even try to turn this. I don't think it does. Nope. But if we remove this, it does indeed power up the fan. The strange thing is if you then add the charger, it's going to shut down the fan, start charging again. If you don't have it charging and you turn on the light and then add the charger, it's going to shut off the light and begin charging. Uh, so just, you know, sucks that it doesn't have pass through of any kind. Um, that that would have been nice, but I guess it, it, it's kind of strange that these wires are thicker in gauge than these. Um, let me try to see. My eyes are still a bit shot from the bright LED. If I had to take a guess, I'd say this is 22 gauge? 24? I mean, this is pff, 26, 28? So uh, that doesn't make a lot of sense to me, and this is not silicone. This, ah, uh, this could be silicone. This isn't. This, this might be silicone. This is PVC. Um, I was also curious, I guess, pull the charger off. Oh, you guys can't see the um, the meter. It's like I was saying, um, we're not, you know, completely charged yet. We're not at 4.2 volts. So, you know, technically we haven't hit, and hit the constant voltage stage. So current shouldn't be tapering off. And we are at 4.1615. So, max input is five volts, one and a half amps, unless it's the cable, but you know, I don't know this cable to be an issue. Let me grab my lowest resistance cable. Hopefully this one works. It has an E marker in it, which sometimes causes problems with some of these things, but it, you never know. It's usually USB A to C stuff. Same thing. Oh. We've got almost 1.8. So cable resistance could play an issue. Five volt, two amps is definitely a possibility because now we are likely at 4.2 volts. Yep, 4.19, 4.2, yeah. So maybe, maybe it is, you know, just about two amps, but you'd need, um, you'd need a very low resistance. I mean, this is a, like one and a half foot cable, and it wasn't terribly expensive, but it wasn't, 
you know, a super cheap two dollar one. I want to say it was like ten bucks. I got two of them for twenty, I think. Um, I don't even know if these have a name brand or anything, but nope. But um, yeah, if you can find these on Amazon, um, they claim to be ten gigabits per second. They have e-markers, so they're 100 watts capable. They're one meter or one and a half feet, something like that. Wonderful cables. So my other question, I didn't measure this. What is the output voltage for the LEDs? And I'm seeing three volts. That kind of makes sense. I don't, it's probably DC. Yeah, it's DC. Okay. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Three volts. 